Good morning, HBWC Nation. Happy Communion Sunday. It is crazy this morning, guys. We are doing a 9.15 at 11 a.m. I'm about to step into the 11 a.m. service, guys. And guess what? This morning, after this powerful resurrection weekend from last week, I want to ask you this question. We got to, I'll make a statement at least. You got to appreciate him, but don't waste the gift. Hey, I love you. We'll see you soon. Be blessed. Father, we thank you right now for your presence. It's right now. Let us enter into his front. I know he's already here. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you. Oh, my God, we thank you. With all the nefarious stuff around our country, around our nation, people arguing and trying to decide different things. So many decisions got to be made. They can't take this from us. As we stop for a moment, we honor your presence, we honor your presence, we honor your presence. The Bible says in your presence there's fullness of joy. Right now, God, we need the fullness of your joy. We need the fullness, the capacity of your joy, your glory of our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill this room. Feel your people, God, right now. We ask in the name of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that makes the difference. The blood of Jesus that makes the difference. We honor your presence. We honor your presence, God. It's so, it's so sweet in this room right now. It is so sweet in this room. Have your way in and through us, God. As, the, as Samuel said, he said, Lord God, here I am. Your servant is listening. God, today we're your servant, and God, we're listening. Thank you for who you are in our lives. Press all flow now. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Every heart say amen. Give God a good hand of praise, you guys, don't mind. Come on, give God a good way. I know it's 915. I know the 915 crew. We're trying to adjust our way back to 2 3 But God has been good to us. God has been good to us. This morning, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10 in the Message Bible, God, we honor your presence. We just worship you and honor your name. Oh, my God, okay. 1 Corinthians 15, 10, the Message Bible. And it reads, But what, whatever I am now, it is all because of God poured out his special favor on me. And not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God, who was working through me by his grace. This morning, before you have your seat, the first at this 915, sir, before you have your seat, I'm going to tell your neighbor, don't waste it. Appreciate it. Now tell the other one, they didn't get it, they didn't get it. So don't, don't waste it. Don't, don't waste it. Appreciate it. Have your seat in the presence of God. I remember, I remember when my daughter was in the high school and well, the eighth grade, my middle, middle school, high school, and I wanted to turn this term, this title, this sermon, show to work, but the Holy Spirit turned it over this morning. I was studying the Word of God, and I remember she was in the eighth grade, or ninth grade, and eighth grade at, at Brundown Middle School, and we was, we was doing the math, and the math teacher came in, and he talked to us, and which we can do this, but he made it plain to us. He said, he said, I need them to do the work. I need them to show me the work. And not just get the answer. They wanted them, they, the math teacher, and they still, I'm quite sure teachers in the room still do it today. They don't want you just to get the answer to the problem. They want to see you work the problem. We'll figure the answer out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure the answer out because you, can, you may get the answer but don't know the work. And if you don't, if you don't know the work, you don't appreciate the work. You don't appreciate the work. If you, don't, if you don't know how we got here, you don't know why. That's why history is good for us because you begin to appreciate stuff when you see how hard people work to get you there. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. So I like the fact that we get to, 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 to appreciate what Christ has done for us. We just come out of Resurrection Weekend, and normally, I'm just being honest, normally we get this high rush, and then all of a sudden the church falls for a minute before they pick back up in the fall because of Easter. That's just, that's just, that's just true talk, and I'm, I'm doing all I can to not let that happen. I want to show people around the world, around the country, we must appreciate the work of Christ. And we can't waste it. We can't waste his grace. So what Paul does, Paul does a good job in 1 in Corinthians and 15th chapter. Because up until the 15th chapter, those that know theology, up until the 15th chapter of Corinthians, Paul is really talking about behavior. He's answering questions about different things, about how you live. So really up until then about sex and all that's going on in that first part of Corinthians. Well, Paul now gets to this 15th chapter, and he, he, and he rehearsed Easter. He gets to the 15th chapter, and he began to rehearse the resurrection weekend. He comes, because they, they've asked this question about resurrection. There's a question being asked about, okay, okay, do we believe in God? Will, will he come back? Are we going back with him? What's all that stuff? It's kind of, it sounds kind of mystical. Do we just get saved, live life, then we die? What's all this conversation about? Now that we come out of this resurrection weekend, Paul does a good job here. He said in verse 1, he said, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you. He said, Remind. remind. He said, I want to remind you of the gospel, the good news. I'm going to have another, a, a, re a recap over resurrection weekend. He said, I preach to you which you receive and on which you have taken your stand. He's now you, you got saved. You know who Christ is. I like that. And you've taken your stand based on that belief. I'm good to God. I'm with you God. Now, for those who are uh, 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 theological ministers, preachers, deacons, uh, seminary sound, those who are maybe a new Christian, let me tell you something. If you study first, if you work 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 10, you can preach that by yourself. I mean, this is it. This is Christianity. What I'm about to tell you is Christianity one-on-one. -on -one. Paul said, I need to remind you of the gospel that I preach. That's the good news. In which you now take your stand. That's, you have been, you've been transferred over. Look at verse 2. He said, he said, by this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you now, be careful here. Because this is going to challenge a lot of religions around the country. Because a lot of religions around the country say stuff like, you know, which I believe that because the man at the cross proved that, that all you got to do is accept Christ in your heart and you are saved. So that's true. Now that's true, but then what Paul said, he said, if you hold firmly. Uh huh, Paul. Paul don't play no game. He's like, uh huh, you, you say you're saved. He said, but if you hold firmly, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, Otherwise you, have, otherwise, you have lied to yourself and you never were saved. You've lied to yourself and you just told you, told us you believe God. But in essence, you didn't. Paul now goes to that boy, uh, come in, he said in verse 3, he said, For what I receive, I, I, I pass on to you. What I receive, I pass on to you of first importance. Now, here's where, where, I get, where, where, here, where we recap resurrection. I pass on to you, where for, and I, now I'm going to pass a lot of stuff on to my kids. You know, how to money, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff I pass on, you know, land, I hope I, a lot of stuff I pass on. But let me tell you something. If you're not passing Christ on your kids, you're yeah. failing them. Okay. <laughs> Paul said, I passed on the first important. I, don't, I, I, know, I know we need good grades. I do. I know when you get your, get your credit, right, credit right, I know. I know when you get your right place, you'll, you'll get married right. I'm with that. I'm all cool and gang with that. But if you, don't, you ain't saved, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you don't know Jesus, he's, I pass on you the first important, that Christ died for our sin according to Scripture. It says Scripture. scripture. Now here's why I got to slow down and say Scripture, because there's been a bunch of buffoonery out there about the Word of God not being eternal. There's a lot of a feeling out there on YouTube, social media, crazy, cuckoo for Cocoa Puff stuff about the Bible. 
about you don't have that. It, that all, they call it old, old uh, uh, man's tale, fairy tale. All these lies. Paul is himself stands and says he called it scripture. He said, this, this, Jesus, we're talking about was talked about in the word of God. And I like what Paul goes on to say about this word. Because see, you can't really, you can't really appreciate it until you know what he did. He said, verse 3, I like what he said. He said that Christ died for our, our sin according to the scripture that was written about him. Verse 4 says that he was buried. Say buried. buried. Let's say he was buried, that he was raised from the raised on the third day according to scripture. This is all resurrection. We can recap. All recap is about Christ died for your sin. Otherwise, you were nasty. You were on your way to hell. Eternal, you, your, he took your eternal bad and turned it into eternal good. Uh -huh. You're going to live, you're going to die somewhere. You're going to die and live the rest of your life somewhere. Eternally good or eternally bad. Christ helped us go the good way. And so man, every person living on the earth right now, you're going one way or the other. There is no in between. And so Paul said, I come to remind you. I come to remind you that me and, me and a guy was talking yesterday. Well, yesterday me and a guy was talking about our young people. Well, yesterday, or for the Friday, I don't know who I was talking to. I talked to some of the people this week. He was talking about our young people, how we can help them out. And I said, tell you, I said, he said, hey, yeah, I was at the gym. I was at the gym, and I saw this guy who, 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 who called me pastor. I ain't seen him so long. I saw him at the gym. And he said, pastor. Tell you something. He said, I help our young people. You're the man for it. I said, wow, I'm the man for it. He said, yeah, you're a good pastor. You're the, you're the man for it. And so we kept talking. He kept talking. He kept talking. So finally I said, I said, tell you what, here's what we got to do. We got to get them off the exit. So you, we, we're trying to help our young people without first getting them off the exit. Come on now. We, they're going down the freeway headed the wrong way, people. And you're trying to you're trying to feed their ego and their passion and their appetite going down the same road. You got to first get them off the ramp. Get them off the ramp. Get the next exit is Christ. Get off. Get off. We got to get them off. We can't fake this no more. What was good for you is good for your kids. If, mom, if your mom sought to bring you to church, bring your kids to church. If your mom thought that you should be saved, get saved. If your mom thought that. So it's not much, so much that we can educate them. I'm with that. We can feed them. I'm with that. We can give them money. I'm with that. But some of our kids are going to be rich going to hell. Some of our kids going to have one of the baddest shoes, have one of the most, have the million, million followers on their way to hell and taking a million folks with them. That's the scary part. Now you want to go to hell, go. But a million folk following you there? The enemy really, 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 really kick he. Now he, he don't like you, but who he want to get is your children's children. See, if I can change the trajectory in your life, I mess up generational wealth. Two, three, four generations. I want you to yell, I want you to yell out loud, me. Say, he won't get mine. All right, now I said, get, not get nasty, but say, now he won't get mine. Oh, see, okay, y'all don't. He said, Pastor, he ain't, he ain't saved yet. See, now you got doubt. Say, he won't get mine. So you're not, you're not trying to talk what you see. I'm talking about what he is. I'm trying, I'm, I'm, okay, go back to teaching. For that was he buried, that was raised on the third day. All this stuff, Paul is speaking prophetically. He said, now, everything we know that has happened on Resurrection Weekend was written about it. There's no secrets there. God is so smooth, he had the prophets write it down. And because we like, we like prophetic stuff, we like stuff coming to pass. We like to see stuff. I'm going to have them write. I'm going to make Isaiah write. The psalmist right. And so when he shows up, you're going to look back and say, hmm, I seen this somewhere. <laughs> I see it's in the scripture. Paul said, it's in the scripture. Up to what Paul is doing right now, he is magnifying scripture. Yes, yes, yes. He's, he's building a case. He's building scripture. He's not building Isaiah. Because, mm -mm. see, we get, don't, get, don't get it twisted. You don't, you, you don't, we don't celebrate Isaiah. 
We celebrate that God of Isaiah. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you, you see, so Paul is saying he was raised on the third day. He was raised on the third day. Come here, come here, Hosea. He was raised on the third day. Hosea said he'll be raised. He will raise up. God will raise him up on the third. It's already prophesied that this would happen. But him to tell you, saints, don't waste it. Oh, don't waste it. Don't waste it. Watch this text. Watch this text. Paul not goes to say, and he appeared before Cephas and then the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters. At the same time, most of them who still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then appeared to James, then all the apostles. Now, let me stop right there. Here's why you want the reason. Just listen, this is, this is, this is theological one on one, y'all. This is, this is seminary one on one. You believe in Christ and we believe the scriptures because of the historical part of it. See, yes, we can believe by faith all day, and we do. We trust God and the Bible by faith. Come on now, we just do. You never seen God, have you? You never seen Jesus, have you? So we believe by faith. We got that. We, 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 we take one of our theologians and say, we, 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 we're different. We, we believe first and walk it backwards. Yeah, we, we believe first and then start building the case. We don't, if, you, if you continue to build a case, you might not get saved. Uh, so, so what we do, we believe by faith and then work our case backwards. So here Paul tells us, here's why you can believe the more in the scriptures. In the scriptures, written prophetically. Then he turned around and said, somebody actually saw him. That's historical. I mean, somebody laid their hands on Jesus. It's not, a, it's not, it's not mystical. Somebody saw him after he died. He got, somebody saw him, somebody saw him die, and then somebody saw him afterward. Man, come on now. He said, you, listen, you believe Homer? You believe Shakespeare from that stuff? Come on now. We got stuff that we can believe. We can believe this because somebody actually saw him. Come on, come on. I, I, now, I saw him. I, I, I'm new to him. I'm Facebooking him. I saw him. But how y'all believe in Jesus because somebody saw him? And but Paul says, here's the thing about it. He didn't just let his, his, his apostles saw him. He let 500 people saw him. And then he let apostles and James, his brother, his brother James, who got saved later. They all, that's the reason Paul is saying all this. But look at verse, look at now, now what Paul says in verse 8, which connects to us. Paul says, and last of all, he appeared to me. <laughs> See, Paul said, now they saw him. They literally put their hands on him. They put their hands on him. They saw him. They touched him. But I, I didn't have that experience. I had a revelatory experience. Uh -huh. I got knocked off my horse. Yeah. I thought I knew how to live right. I thought I could fix my own family together. I thought I, could get, I thought I had the best career in the world. I thought I had it going on. And I thought God was on my side because I had a lot of money. I thought God was on my side because I had gotten a disease from having sex like I want to. I thought God had to be on my side because I can cheat and still win. I thought God was on my side. I thought God was on my side until so I realized I was not on, it was not on my side at all. Paul decided, by was, by was, Paul got knocked off the horse. You hear what Paul said? Paul said, I, he appeared to me through revelation and I really saw something. He said, as one abnormally born. Say abnormally. abnormally. Now, see, that might not make sense to you and I, but let me, any, 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 any parents, any moms in here that have children, girls, can't no man have a child? <laughs> Females. <laughs> now, I had, we had, Lexus had, uh, had Shallow, Lord, Ezra, Shallow, both of them. <laughs> but Ezra... If you ask for what would be considered, he was premature. All right, right where I'm saying premature baby. And so he came early. He, when he came in God said, come, I guess about I can tell you. He came out of there. But here's the thing about it. That's one, that's one thing to have. You can see prematurely born. Because now you got to do something with it to help it live. Get that out your head. This birth is where you're 10 months pregnant. You're 11 months pregnant. 
<laughs> Other words, pregnancy going on too long. So this is not, woo! y'all, I'm going to preach this better second service. But, but, but this is untimely born. This is an untimely birth. You can't, I, 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 I shouldn't be saved. God help me. I, 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 I know my drunk self. I know my nasty self. I should not be called an apostle. I should not be preaching the gospel. Mine is untimely. Mine didn't show up like yours. I didn't get saved like you did. I got saved from the uttermost. From the guttermost. Y'all help me here. So you've been sitting there all your life through Sunday school. You came through the ranks. You should be a preacher. You should be a teacher. But baby, I shouldn't be here. I got I would I would have said I would Oh, this birth, this birth right here, don't make sense. You, yeah, you look at the car you drive up here. That makes sense, maybe, because you work for that. But Paul recognized. I shouldn't be a good father. My wife shouldn't have stayed with me. Oh, you ain't, you ain't sex that good. My husband should have left me a long time ago. No, you don't make that kind of money. <laughs> it's by God's grace. Okay, back to the text. Let me go back to the text. Paul is going to remind him why you must do not race this. Okay, go back to the text. Calm down, boy. You gotta, I got to preach again. Preach again. Paul says, Ooh. Paul says in verse 9, I must remind myself, I'm the least of the apostles. I must remind myself, just because I got all these churches, I'm the least of the apostles. I'm going to remind myself. I don't care how many folks come now, come to this congregation. I got to remind myself, boy, you the least of preachers. You shouldn't be preaching. I don't care how many degrees you got. You got to look at yourself. Say, God, I know me. I shouldn't be where I am. I'm the least of them. I know we got this divine and this. This new doctrine called individualism. Oh, this doctrine of individualism is kicking out behind, Deke. All about you. All about you, the individual. Thousands of folks show up because of one individual. They don't show up. All about one individual. Even I watched the game of the night, I won't talk about too much. I'm not a, I watch the game, that thing, that, that thing is third of the night. And it's third better night. But I understand that's you can't live by that sword and don't think to die by it now. The system is a system. You won't Iowa in the national championship. You won't Caden Clark playing basketball. It's called money, guys, like it or not. Y'all ain't gotta admit me. <laughs> it's money game. It's a money game. It's a money game. You want LeBron to play off. It's money game. It's, it's a system. It's crooked, but we like it when our team winning. The system. And so when it, you can, we live by that lion sword and we die by that same lion sword. And here Paul is saying, I'm not, I don't want to make this about me. That's why he started with him. He said, I don't want to make this about me. Remember, Christ died. Christ came. He died. He got up. That's what I'm making it about. I'm the least of them. When this thing begins to be about me, I got to step back. When folks start showing up because of you, they got to step back. When things start happening because of you, Come on, Lord, help me. I know, I know I'm finding a spirit right now because we like being seen. We like being out front. And God will make you out front. God will put, Paul is out front. And he had to remind himself, I'm the least. I'm the least. Now God gave me this business. I'm the CEO. Now I'm not going to waste it. And I know I got to be out front. 
but I know I shouldn't be afraid. Look how good I am. I want to tell you, sit down. You that good, sit down. Oh, I'm the best. You're the best. Sit down. I don't need the best. I need, I need somebody who's the least. I want somebody who appreciate the gift God got on your life. I want you to appreciate the gift. Not this arrogant, look at me. Not this arrogant, I got to be the one. But get off, sit down, and let God put somebody in place who understand if it had not been for God. Paul says, oh my gosh, we're done. We've got too many good. Paul says, I'm the least of the apostles. I do not even deserve to be called an apostle. Because I didn't just, watch this, look at that text. Please writers, please Sunday school teachers, please students, look at that text. Look at that word he used. Paul didn't just say, it's not the fact that I didn't believe in you, Robert, in your marriage. I talked about your marriage. See, it's one thing not to believe in HBWC. But it's something nasty to talk about HBWC. See, that's, that's different. That's a, that's a difference. That's a difference saying, you know, you know, I don't really understand all their dialect and stuff like that. Um, but I wouldn't go if I were you. That's nasty. I wouldn't go for all you call the pastor black. No, really. He got he got mixed couples in his sanctuary. He got girls in the praise team. See, see, now you're not just not believing in us no more. You're cutting us at the same time. And see, a lot of that nasty stuff is happening in the body of Christ. It's not the fact you don't like my church. You talk about it too. It's not that you don't like her being a dentist. You talk about her being a dentist. It's not you don't like my praise team. You talk about the praise team. It's the different part is saying it's not the fact that I didn't believe in their gospel. I tried to kill their gospel. It's not enough not to like me. You want me breathing. You want, you want my marriage destroyed. It's not, a, it's not okay with you not going over there. You literally want to take us out. It's one thing not to like Perry, Ronald Robin, veteran, high school, but God, church, it's something nasty. We want a school to fail. I'm coming at all of us. It's one thing not to believe in some things, but it's one thing to watch those kids go to the championship game and we want them to fail. Oh, come on. That's, I'm coming at us today. It's one thing not to believe in us, but it's something else. I hope he missed that shot. I hope he front the next grade. Come on. And that's what we have become. It's not the fact we don't believe in making. We won't make him to fail. It's not the fact that we don't believe in Israel or Gaza. We want them to fail. And Paul is saying, yes, this help us, Lord. We've all done it. All have done it. One thing, not to believe in something and not support it. I get it. I'm not supporting something. But to persecute them. Paul has said, I'm the least of the apostles because I didn't just not believe in Jesus. I wanted to take them down. Paul, like, oh, wait a minute. Stop. Verse 10, he finally gets to verse, he finally gets to verse 10 and says, listen. That's why in the message Bible, it's better written. He said, whatever I become. He said, but whatever I'm, I am now, it is because of God poured out his spirit of favor on me. And not without, he said, this thing was not without results. For I have worked harder than all of them. And here's what Paul is saying. I work harder than them all. Then he says this right here. Yet it was not I, but God who working through me by his grace. As much as I can tell you I'm a hard worker, I'm working hard because I appreciate him. Somebody, somebody stopped me this morning and said, Pastor, you are wide open. You already wide open. You woke up fired up, fired up. I did, I did. I did. I know I got two surgeries free. I had to maintain on something. I had to get it. I get it. I get it. 
Don't, you, don't, you don't want this energy. You don't want this energy I got. Come on, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Let me tell you something, though. Because I know I got to give out so much energy on Sunday. I protect my energy on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I don't waste a lot of energy on Saturday. And this is my family, so I got a bit to do. But I don't waste energy. I don't waste time talking a lot on Saturday. Because I'm going to talk on Sunday. So I would give it, Pastor. I would get up oh, last night. You ain't ready then. You're not ready. You're not ready to do this. You're wasting too much energy on Saturday. See, we get to serve people here. And the enemy want to take all our energy on Saturday. So Paul is saying, the work I do, I'm working hard. I'm practicing, I'm preaching, I'm in the mirror, with sermon, I'm reading books, keep my, my vernacular right to make sure I communicate well. I'm working hard as I can. I'm working hard. I studied a lot of commentary. I've got, I got my doctorate degree. I did all that. I'm working hard. And that's easy to brag about what I've done. But I'm only doing that because I appreciate him because of the energy that he gives me. Come on, God. It's, not, it's easy to say, look at the wall. Look at the wall. Look at the work I put in. Paul said, yeah, I work harder than all of them only because of the energy, the grace of God on my life because I choose not to waste it. See, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking bad about those guys. But they got special privilege because they feel they saw Jesus hand in hand. See, God didn't move in my life like he moved in yours. No, no, no. I didn't get saved at eight like you did. I was the one that was abnormally, I got in late. Now I'm in, late, now I'm in, I wish I got in earlier. But God didn't see fit, let me get in early. So wherever you are right now in your walk with God, get it, just do in now. But I want you to do today is don't waste it. Don't waste it. Appreciate it. And here are four ways to do that. I'm, I'm going to sit down. One way is confess him. Continue to confess him. Don't hide him. Don't hide him. Matthew 16, 10, 32, about Jesus said, Who shall confess me for me for men? I'll confess them for my Father in heaven. That's how you appreciate him. Just confess him. Number two, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny your ambitions. Submit your ambitions to him. All of him. The Bible said, Mark, Mark 8, 34, said, When he had called his people to himself, his disciples also, he said to them, Whosoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. And then he says, another one is obey him. Confess, deny, obey him. John 1, John, John 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. We're going to change that, guys. It's really, John 4, it's really John 14, 15. It's John 14, 15. I gave it to him wrong. John 14 and 15 says, John 14, 15. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandment. What is his commandment? Loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body, and loving your neighbor as yourself. The last one is right here. Be empowered by him. That's how you, be, that's how you don't waste it and, be, and, and appreciate him. That's why you do this right here. This last one is something serious. This, all, this last one's serious. Acts 1 8, he told them, go and sit and wait. And he says, but you will see power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all your dear Samaria at the ends of the earth. So don't waste it. But here's how you appreciate it, though. You allow the Holy Spirit to empower you. See, the Holy Spirit will empower you to do something you can't do yourself. See, when you give God your yes, he gives you your, he gives him your power, his power. His power says, yes, God, I'm saying yes to a marriage that I have no idea what I'm doing. I told my wife, she, she, she would get her, she would get her, uh, she would get her husband um, on September 16th, 2024, she would get her, she would get her husband, her, her married, her married man for, for one year, for the first year. For the first year, she'd get a married man for the first year, a full married man for the first year. My wife get a full married man for the first year. I got married at 27 years old. I was single 27 years, 27 years. This should be our 28th anniversary. 
I mean, I got one year. I, I mean, I had more singleness than me even, even at 26 years. Oh, I, I just missed up all y'all marriage. I know I did. I know I did. I know I did. <laughs> you think you know your husband? You know, God, you, you still single. You still, you still didn't learn how to be married. Because you stayed single so long. Even at 25 years of marriage, I'm still, I'm still learning how to be married because I, I, I was still single long I've been married. But babe, I got a year coming. My anniversary coming. And I can finally say, I've been married longer than I've been single. I, I, I don't know that one's exciting on you. I get it. I get it. That's why, that's why you struggle. You struggle because your singleness still trying to control you because you stay single for so long. Now, some of y'all stay single 16 years. I'm married now. I get it. Some of y'all got in early. Praise God. But some of us got in late. And what I need, what, I, what has kept me for over the 27 years is his power. His power has kept me 27 years, and his power is going to keep you. I want to encourage all of you. I know we're about to have our anniversary. Now, what I should be preaching this morning is let's celebrate our anniversary. I start that next. I will start that next week. But I sense Holy Spirit telling me today, uh-uh, recap resurrection. You don't want to waste what happened last week. You don't want to waste what God is doing in your life right now, your family, your money, your marriage. Don't waste it. But how do you appreciate it? By continuing to confess him, by continuing to obey him. Continue to know yourself and let him empower you to live a life you can't live by yourself. Let's bow our heads. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you, God, we get to serve. We can't do this by ourselves. God, we want to appreciate you so much for what you've done for us. God, thank you for saving us. We commit our families unto you. We give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name, every heart say amen. amen. Give God a hand of praise. God, you enjoy that word. Hallelujah. I, I, I do better. I do better. I do better next time. Um, but we're going to stay at two services at 9, 15, 11 a.m. Um, some of my folks like the early, early morning services. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you guys out. I'm going to let some of my ministers. I'm, I'm not even going to tell my ministers. They'll know we, I'm not going to make my ministers come to, come to the first service to preach. You'll preach if you show up. That's how they get with me. I don't, I, don't, I don't manipulate people to show up. If you hear it, you preach. And so I'm going to train them sometime on the first service. I'm going to tell y'all when. Y'all like, I don't want to hear pastor. I get it. I get it. I get it. We're trying to train also. Y'all ready to give this morning? Yeah. Listen, I want to, I want, I want you guys, we really are, we are really, we are really, I'm, I'm going to preach on faith next month. I'm going to tell you guys, we're going to have to, we're about to really move the dial on our, on what we want God to do for us. I've been in prayer about some things, and we're trying to really bless God in our giving. Our church gives, continues. We do, we give. But I want you guys to really pray about being a consistent giver. Yeah. A consistent giver. Get to the entire there. We're going to do our first fruit in a minute. But right now, I want you to think pray about what to give today. And as you pray about what to give today, God, be a tither anyway. That's a, that's a no-brainer for those that don't want to thank grace giving. But God, I want, to, I want to bless your seed today. God, as we prepare to give today, we don't play games and trick people with money because they work for their money. But also, God, we want to waste it. We want to show you our appreciation by giving to you. So, God, today, as they give to you, whether it's online, whether it's in an envelope, we bless it today. We thank you that we get to give. In Jesus' mighty name. Every heart say amen. If you would, bring the first fruit baskets up. If you would, when you leave, you give it an envelope. You can put the offering in the basket as you walk out. Then make sure that that's taken care of. Those that want to give fresh fruit. Our first fruit is really our anniversary seed. It's our anniversary seed. We're asking our people to give at least a minimum, a minimum $500 outside of tithing offering. And a maximum $1,500. If we get $1,500, we got, but somebody, already, somebody has already decided, I'm going to tell, I can't tell the name yet. They're going to feed y'all on anniversary day, Sunday. They're going to feed the whole church. They're going to feed the whole church. They're going to feed the whole church. Well, it's not costing me a quarter. I just got to say yes. They feed the whole church. I see now you realize a lot of folks coming because Tasha Faye Lockhart is going to be in the house and it's going to be crazy up in here. And so, like, yeah, Pastor, okay. For those fifteen hundred dollars giver, I'm li- I got something for you different. Something different for you. Right? You'll you're, you're know later. So, do you bring the basket to me, gentlemen? Thank you, man. Put your hand toward the first fruit. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that we get to sow a seed. Not that our offering is different from this, but first fruit is different in the scripture. So God, we weigh this before you. Multiply, cover it in the mighty name of Jesus. Every heart say amen. amen. Let us all stand with the with your, with your, with your communion. Back to communion. I, I, I felt, somebody saying, Pastor, I have felt it. <laughs> I felt it. Trust the leadership. I got this. Trust it. I got this. <laughs> got this. Somebody got me one? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Listen, let me tell you something. This is some powerful stuff. And God, we honor you. We would hold it up for God once you get it open. I feel some of y'all struggling. I put that struggling spirit. Well, Father, we hold us up to you. We do. This is one way we can appreciate you. This is one way we can say thank you. <laughs> yeah, God, you said in your word that we should not take this half-heartedly. So right now, God, if we committed any sin, thought off we shouldn't have, thought, we ask you for your forgiveness. Purify our mind, purify our hearts, sanctify our journey. We recommit ourselves to you, our families. Thank you for your healing power, your anointing, and your grace. Now, God, we eat and we drink together. Father, right now, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, give your heart say amen. Listen, before you dismiss, I want to speak blessed of your life. Tomorrow night, we have prayer and go. I'm not thinking right. Prayer and go tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. If you don't know it, get a sheet out front. You got a, a, a number on there. Let's pray together. And then Wednesday, we got baptism, guys. We got baptism. It's going to be great. We got baptism. Uh, tonight, we got our new membership class. But, guys, I want to show you something. Our anniversary on the 5th is, is, is this. We're going to change this line, put 9, 15, 11 a.m. But Tasha Page Lockhart is coming to help us celebrate our birthday. It's going to be cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. We're excited what God is going to do. So, God, I speak blessings over your life. May God cover you. May God grace you. In Jesus' mighty name, every heart say amen.